Hi guys, welcome to the session. In this session, we'll talk about uh, different types of exponential segments. So for the next 10-15 minutes, we'll talk about uh, intricacies in exponential segments. So let's start with the session. So before starting, this is my profile. So my subjects of expertise are communication systems and signals and systems. And this is my telegram group. If you wish to ask me any questions, you can ask me on this group. Right. So let's talk about the uh, different types of exponential signals. So the first uh, type of exponential signal is a real exponential signal. So when I say real exponential signal, definitely takes real values, only real values. So one example, I'll give you an example so that it will be easy for you to understand. E power j, sorry, e power, e power 5t or minus 5t. e power minus 5t, e power minus 0.5t, e power plus 0.3t, something like that. If the power is real, if the power is real, definitely the total signal is also real. So this one, the power is real and e power 5t also will be real. e power minus power is real, that's the total signal also will be real. So which means at any point of time, for any value of time, it takes only real amplitudes or real values. So the signals which takes real uh, real values at every point of time, we call them as real exponential signals. Next, coming to complex exponential signals, as the name says, at, a, at every point of time or at, at, at least one instant of time, if the signal takes complex values, we can say it as complex exponential signals. If it, it should be an exponential signal and it should take complex values at least at one point of time. Something like this, e power. 5 plus 4j into d, something like that. In the power, if it is a complex number, if there is a complex number in the power, instead of this uh, real constants, if there is a complex constant, the total signal also will be complex. The total signal also will be complex. See this one, e power 5t, we can write it as e power 5t, into e power j 4t. We can also write it as e power 5t, to g, e power j 4t, we can write it as cos 4t plus j sin 4t. See this one, it has a real part and an imaginary part also. Something like this. So complex exponential signals means in the power, along with the variable, we'll have a complex number. We'll have complex number. The total signal will turn out to be having a real part and imaginary part. Hence, at every point, at different points of time, it takes complex values. Okay, so that's why it be the name complex exponential signal. It is an exponential signal and it takes complex values at different times. Right, coming to the third one, third, third one is a subset of uh, the second one. This is just a subset. This is a subset of uh, complex sinusoidal signal is a subset of complex exponential. I'll tell you what it is. It is also an exponential signal. Sir, it is an exponential signal, but why are you calling it as complex sinusoidal signal? I'll tell you why. So it is also an exponential signal, but in the power, if you see purely real, purely imaginary numbers, purely imaginary numbers along with the variable t, that kind of signals, e power j 5t, e power minus j 4t, e power minus 0.5 j t, j should be there in the power. Pure imaginary numbers, pure imaginary numbers in the power along with the variable. This kind of signals, we call them as complex sinusoidal signals. The reason is, if you expand this e power j 5t, we can expand it as cos 5t plus j sin 5t. See this one? Yes, it is exponential signal. But if you see the real part, real part we are having an, a sinusoidal signal. And in imaginary part also we are having a sinusoidal signal. Right? So sinusoidal signal in the real part and imaginary part. This is complex and it is sinusoidal both in the real and imaginary parts. Hence the name complex sinusoidal signal. I hope you know you understand the, by the name complex sinusoidal signal. If you call this as complex exponential, that is also fine. That is also fine, completely fine. Because an imaginary number is also a complex number, correct? Where real part is zero. There is nothing wrong in calling this complex sinusoidal signal as complex exponential signal, but the more appropriate word to call this is complex sinusoidal signal. Right. So these are the different types of exponential signals. 
and what is the importance of these exponential signals the importance of this exponential signal anything real part real exponential or complex exponential is see this one the format of these signals is e bar a t if a is real if a is real if a is real we call it as a real exponential signal right if a is complex if a is complex it is complex exponential signal right and similarly if a is purely imaginary if a is purely imaginary we call it as complex you can call it as complex exponential signal but the more appropriate name to call it as complex sinusoidal signal okay so what is the importance of these complex exponential signals the importance is in any engineering subjects of electronics or electrical students you will come across this exponential signals every now and in many subjects in many subjects you will see this uh, signal especially in signals in systems or control systems uh, or many other subjects you see this exponential signals okay so that's why learning about this exponential signals is very very important okay, that is one thing so coming to other uh, let me mention a few other points as well so exponential signals are can also be called as eigen functions they behave like eigen functions of lta systems they behave like eigen functions of lta systems what is the meaning of eigen functions that is covered in some other session taken uh, by rakesh sir uh, recently so let i'll quickly revise what is the meaning of eigen function for lta system if h of t is the impulse response and capital h of omega is the frequency response and capital h of s is the transfer function of this lta system if you give e power at kind of uh, input the output will be if you are passing any eigen function as input the output will be same as the input for eigen functions for eigen functions of a system whatever input you give if that is an eigen function output also will be exactly same except it is multiplied with some constant and that constant is decided by the transfer function of the system so s equal to a if you take the transfer function and substitute s equal to a you'll get some value for the set of s right that value that is the constant that is its the output this is an eigen function when you apply eigen function as input the output also is same as eigen function the output is exactly same multiplied with some constant and that constant is decided by the transfer function of the system transfer function at uh, in the exponential function whatever is the exponential signal that you are giving as input in that whatever is the power apart from the variable remove the variable whatever is the remaining part that value if you substitute in the place of s we get a constant in this function when you substitute s with some constant that constant is the deciding factor of the output so any function which when given as input to a system if you get the same output except multiplication with some constant we can call that function as eigen function so for lta systems especially for lta systems especially exponential functions all all of them real exponentials or complex exponential or complex sinusoidal functions any of these three type of exponential signals they behave as eigen functions to lta system so finding the output of lta system is easy for these uh, exponential signals because they behave as eigen functions okay right so that is the understanding about uh, exp uh, few understandings about exponential signals so let us talk a little bit about real exponential signals when you talk about real exponential signals we are talking about e power at kind of signal where a is real where a is real right so if a is positive how how will the shape look like if a is negative how the shape looks like if a is positive what happens if a is positive see this one you don't need to by heart it if a is positive for positive but t equal to 0 at t equal to 0 it becomes e power 0 which is 1 for positive time for positive time a is positive t is also positive so e power positive value will be greater than one so which means as t increases a is positive t is positive power will be positive as t increases power increases and the total value also increases it increases at t equal to infinity power is infinity e power infinity will be infinity similarly for negative values of time for negative values of time so power will be negative e power negative value is less than one so as t increases negatively as t increases negatively power increases negatively so overall value decreases similarly at t equal to minus infinity if you analyze e power minus infinity will become zero 
So this is how the shape looks like if A is positive. Similarly, if A is negative, if A is negative, exactly opposite shape you can say. Or let us analyze from the basics only. If t equal to 0, e power 0 will become 1. If t is positive, but A is negative here, we are analyzing for negative values of A. If A is negative, then for positive values of time, power will be negative. If power is negative, value will be less than 1 only. The value for positive values of time, this total value will be less than 1 only. As t increases, as t increases positively, this value, power increases negatively. So, e power negative value will be decreasing. It will be something like this. Similarly, for negative values of time, when t is negative, a is also negative, power becomes positive. As you go from 0 to minus infinity, power increases positively. So, e power positive value, e power a t also increases. As you go from 0 to minus infinity, this value also increases. So, this is an exponentially increasing function you can say and this is an exponentially decreasing function. And these two functions, e power a t kind of function where a, is, a can be positive or negative, this is not absolutely integrable. These signals are not absolutely integrable. Okay. So, if they are not absolutely integrable and they are also not, they are neither energy, they are neither energy nor power signals. They are neither energy nor power signals. Wait for a minute. If you are having any confusions, I will clear it. They are neither energy nor power signals. Okay. So, do they have a Laplace transform? They don't have a lang no Laplace transform. You might say, sir, we have learnt in mathematics that this, this signal is having Laplace transform. Come on. That is unilateral Laplace transform. So, uni unilateral Laplace transform exists for this one, but, but bilateral Laplace transform does not exist. So, being more specific, bilateral Laplace transform does not exist for real exponential signals like this. But, let me remove the confusion here. E power 80 into u of t. For e power 80 into u of t, this can be, if a is negative, if a is negative, e power 80 into, a into, e power 80 into u of t is only this part, this part, then the signal is absolutely integral. This signal, if you multiply with u of t, you are talking about only this part, only this part, if you observe, the area is finite, so it will be absolutely integral. Hence, Fourier transform exists. Definitely, Laplace transform also will exist. Okay. So, both bilateral Laplace transform as well as unilateral Laplace transform both will exist. So, u of t should be there. In mathematics, if you are learning Laplace transform of u power at as 1 by s minus a, something like that. In, La in mathematics, what we learn is unilateral Laplace transform where you are considering the signal only for positive time. Even though they have given e power at, whose, whose, shape, whose shape looks like this, whose shape looks like this or like this based on a value positive or negative. Okay, you are considering this only for positive time, only for positive time in unilateral Laplace transform. So, in mathematics, what we deal with is unilateral Laplace transform. Though they give this signal, they are talking about this signal. Okay, so that is the understanding of uh, real exponential signals. So, there can be different combinations that you can talk about e power minus, sorry, e power at into u of minus. You can talk about this also. So, you can multiply with the uh, step signal which exists only for negative time. If you are talking about uh, negative values of a, this is the signal that you are talking about. This is only this part. And if you are talking about a positive value, you are talking about this part of the signal. So, if a, if a is negative, then this is not absolutely integrable. But if a is positive, if a is positive, only you are talking about only the negative part of the signal. If a is positive, if a is positive, e power a t into u of t. This is e power a t. This is also e power a t, but for different values of a. This is also absolutely integrable only for positive values of a. Only for positive values of a, this part is absolutely integrable. Hence, Fourier transform exists for a of negative values. So, only for a negative, these three things are valid. So, these two things are valid. Laplace transform exists irrespective of whether A is positive or negative, but Fourier transform, if you want it to exist, it should be an energy signal. Okay, it's absolutely integrable and it is also energy signal. It's absolute integrability, energy signal and Fourier transform existence all depend on A value. If A is positive for this signal, if A is positive, then 
uh, it is not absolutely integrable, it is not energy signal, it Fourier transform also does not exist. But Laplace transform exists. One sided exponential signal, a sig an exponential signal which exists only for one side, only for positive time or negative time, or which starts at some point and ends at infinity or minus infinity, for those signals, exponential signals which start at some point of time and end at plus or minus infinity, for those signals Laplace transform will exist with some valid ROC. Okay. But uh, two sided exponential signals, this one, see this one? e power e t is a two sided exponential signal. For two sided exponential signals, Laplace transform does not exist. Why? The reason is e power a t into 1. Can I write as e power a t as e power a t into 1? 1, I am going to write it as u of t plus u of minus t because u of t plus u of minus t is 1. So, which we can write as e power a t into u of t plus e power a t into u of minus t. So, the ROC for this part is s greater than a. And the ROC part for this part is S less than A. And the intersection of ROCs, if you take the intersection of ROCs, there is no intersection. The intersection is null. There is no common ROC for the for the two signals that you have uh, written here. Which means there is no uh, there is no valid ROC for this uh, two-sided exponential signals. Okay. Right. So that is the understanding, guys, uh, in today's session. So we'll talk about some other topic in some other session. Until then, goodbye, take care.